Let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh my God, I offer thee all my actions of this day for the intentions and for the glory of the sacred heart of Jesus. I desire to sanctify every beat of my heart, my every thought, my simplest works, by uniting them to its infinite merits. And I wish to make reparation for my sins by casting them into the furnace of its merciful love. O oh my God, I ask of thee for myself and for those whom I hold dear the grace to fulfill perfectly thy holy will, to accept for love of thee the joys and sorrows of this passing life, so that we may be one day united together in heaven for all eternity. Amen. That was the daily offering of St. Teresa of Lisieux, a prayer to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, uh, a beautiful prayer that is meant to show that we are to dedicate everything we do to Jesus, and most especially through his Sacred Heart. Uh, and that's what I'm going to try and talk to inform you a little bit about today, uh, to talk about how we can incorporate the Sacred Heart into our own spiritual lives, how it can transform our lives um, in pursuit of becoming more like Jesus. Uh, as part of that too, we have uh, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which is a beautiful example of how we are to follow in her footsteps um, and how she can lead us to Mary. Uh, first, just a brief introduction into uh, wh where does this devotion come from? Um, some of you may be familiar that it arose in prominence in the, in the 17th century with St. John Eudes and St. Margaret Mary Alcoque. But really, it has its roots in the scripture, in what the heart is in scripture. Um, if we look at John chapter 19, um, the piercing of Jesus' side on the cross, uh, the, from the beginning of the church, and the early church, the church fathers, they see this as the great uh, outpouring of mercy upon the world from the heart of Jesus. Um, and it's not just, you know, oh, he, he bled everywhere, but it's really the love of Christ poured out um, from, the, from the incarnation, from the moment he became man for us, uh, to the moment of his death, and then even through his resurrection. Uh, there's this beautiful representation of the heart which Christ pours out for us. And so uh, I think to, to begin to understand this devotion, we should start with what is the heart in general? What is the biblical understanding? What is our Catholic understanding of the heart? I think frequently uh, when we think about the heart, it's either limited to the physical organ you know, in, in our body or to the you know, the lovey-dovey sort of, uh, oh, you know, uh, Valentine's Day kind of little little hearts that we have, and, it, and it's not really meaningful. Um, but in the biblical understanding from, from the very beginning of the Bible, it's understood as the core of the person. It's where everything in the person comes together uh, and where we actually can interact with God. Um, it's a representation of the interior life. In Deuteronomy 6, the Shema, this, this is the great prayer um, and the great commandment of the Old Testament for, for the Jews. You shall love the Lord with your whole heart, your whole heart. Um, in Jeremiah 31, the law of God is written on the heart of the just. And, and in Romans 10, even, even in the New Testament, it's the place of belief. We believe in our hearts. That that's where we have faith. So it's where all of our, our human humanity, our personhood, kind of comes together in the heart, and it's this great interaction. And when there's harmony um, there, that is when we can pursue God with our whole personhood, not just, you know, oh, I think about God a lot, or I say a lot of prayers, but really we can, we can pursue God in a, in a very great and intimate way. Um, so in, in the heart, there's this, there's this harmony, this coming together of our rational and our affective faculties. So we think of rational, we can think of our reason, our intellect, our will, our mind, and then also our affective, our, um, our passions, our senses, things that we desire. And these come together in harmony. Part of the reason that this um, the St. John Eudes wanted to promote this devotion was in response to a rationalist uh, movement in the 17th century where people were discounting the affective side of humanity and focusing only on the rational. So 
we, he really wanted to raise up and show that no, our affect, our affective faculties, our passions, our desires are in harmony with our faith, are in harmony with living a Christian life. They're in harmony with our humanity, that we are called to, to embrace them, um, not without discernment, but in harmony with our reason so that we can pursue God with our whole personhood, with everything that we are. Um, and I think in the, today's modern uh, context, we focus a little bit too much sometimes on the affective powers and dismiss the rational. We don't, we don't like you know, logic. We don't like thinking about things. It's just about what feels good. And so I think this devotion is kind of going now the other direction of pulling back the reason into the heart and saying we need these in harmony in order to pursue Jesus with all that we are, uh, not just with our minds, not just with our bodies, but with both all together. Uh, and in this we can achieve true intimacy. We can achieve true holiness and, and perfection on the path to heaven. Um, there's, there's this great interior life that we must seek to cultivate as Christians. And it's, it begins in the heart, the center of, this per, of, of our personhood, where all of, all of our faculties, all of our powers, all of our abilities come together. Um, and, and we grow in virtue and we become uh, immersed in the things of Christ where we can cultivate faith and hope in the things to come. Uh, in the promises of Christ, and and that is that is what we are we are seeking to develop in this idea of the heart. That it's not just this you know lovey dovey. Oh, everybody feels good together. No, it's it's all about pursuing Christ with all that we are, not holding anything back, uh, and giving everything over to Christ. And so, in this devotion to the Sacred Heart, it is first and foremost a devotion to Jesus Himself. Right? We're not elevating his physical heart or, or you know, his human heart. Uh, we're not worshiping that per se, but we're worshiping the person of Jesus. Uh, and we're worshiping the heart as it represents the person of Jesus. I think the heart is a beautiful image um, when thinking about the person of Jesus. Because it's where it, it is a part of his humanity. Right? God became fully human for us. He died he was, born, he was born, he died, and he rose again for us, for our salvation. And, and that is when we uh, cultivate this devotion to the Sacred Heart, we can gain an appreciation for this. Um, excuse me. The prayer of the church, we, we venerate and honor the heart of Jesus Christ. This is from the Catechism uh, of the Catholic Church, and it, it invokes his most holy name. It adores the incarnate word and his heart, which out of love for men... He allowed to be pierced by our sins. Christian prayer loves to follow the way of the cross in the Savior's steps. Right? This is our imitation of Christ. We are imitating Christ in his sacred heart. But not only that, we are growing closer to him um, in, in this as well. We can see this in the image itself. Uh, when we look at this, this is the statue in, in the chapel, in the confessional chapel at St. Mary's here. Uh, we see Jesus opening up his, his tunic, right? He's opening up his chest and revealing his heart to us. This is, this is the, the great uh, love of God being poured out in the incarnation. He's pulling it back and he's pointing to his heart to show us that this is the way to salvation. This is the way to God. This is the way to the interior life of the Trinity for which we are created. We also see here flames coming out of the top of his heart. This is the, the flames of love, the flames of mercy that are being poured out upon the world uh, through, the, through the love of God in the, in the, in the Paschal mystery, for first and foremost, but throughout all of history in the church still today. Um, and then we also have signs of the passion. You see the holes in his hands where the nails were, when he was pierced with nails. We also have the crown of thorn around his heart in this statue. And, it, and it's a beautiful sign that it is through the passion that Christ has saved us, that he brings us close to him, that he has revealed his heart to us, and that he wants to invite us in. And it's, it's through the incarnation he has made man, this beautiful theological synthesis in here, the incarnation, we have the paschal mystery, and also we have the resurrection. This is a major part of this devotion. The heart of Christ still beats in heaven. He rose from the dead. He died and he rose so that we might join him in heaven. And his heart still beats for us. 
His, his physical heart, his human heart is still alive, waiting for us in heaven, waiting to invite us into the, the great glory of the Trinity. It, it is this beautiful, that is, that is one of my favorite parts about this, this devotion, is the great richness of, richness of the theology, of the articles of our faith. Christ became man. He took up a heart for us. He also suffered and died in the passion. We see that in the, in the signs of the passion, in the crown of thorns, in the holes of his hands. But he also rose again. This heart is alive and beating, and he is holding it out for us, inviting us in to this this beautiful, beautiful life of the Trinity. Um, we see this ongoing in the church as well. Uh, if you look into Eucharistic miracles um, in throughout the history of the church, all the tests that have been done, they've done some scientific tests on these, these uh, instances where the bread and the wine uh, that, have been, that have been consecrated at the Mass have turned into actual flesh, have the appearance of actual flesh. Uh, and they have the appearance, appearance of actual blood. Um, they no longer have the appearance of bread and wine. And when they do tests on these, they actually can see that it is heart tissue that has that is that is in that it, it is turned into. It looks and it, and it tests like heart tissue, and the blood, you know, of a suffering man, of a man who has suffered and died for us, but also heart tissue that has been recently you know removed not died thousands and thousands of years ago but recently taken from a from a, uh, a beating heart and and in these we can see that the eucharist is a beautiful beautiful place where christ is giving his heart to us and in eucharistic adoration we can adore the heart of christ it's it's the adoration of the person of christ the body of christ but in a special way the adoration of his heart which he laid down for us and in this, we can also see in part two, you know, as with all devotions to Mary, they lead to Jesus. So too, in a special way, we have a devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which leads us in a special way to the, the, the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Like Jesus, Mary's heart is alive in heaven. We believe that Mary was assumed body and soul into heaven uh, and and she, her heart beats for us and is reaching out to us. Um, we also, St. John Hughes in his book, The Admirable Heart of Mary, he, he points out that there are three levels to the heart of Mary that we honor, right? The first level is the lowest level. This is the, the body, the corporeal level, right? We, her, her body, her, her physical heart pumps blood into her veins and, and gives her body life. And for that, it is, it is worthy of honor, right? Just like, you know, for your, your mom or your grandma or your spouse, you know, because her heart is pumping body, blood through her veins and giving, giving them life, you know, that, that is worthy of honor. Um, the second level is the spiritual heart. This is what we've been talking about more in the biblical sense, the heart of, of the person that is uh, the, the center of the interior life, right? And that is of great honor in Mary because it, you know, it's the source of virtue. It's the source of, of how she pours out her love on the world and how, how we are able to, to imitate that, to recognize the glory in that, that she uh, has successfully you know, given her heart over to, to God and let him transform it and, and really become what it was meant to be. Um, but this third level is, is the most interesting, and I think uh, is something that we can reflect on as well. The third level is the divine heart of Mary. It's the interior life of Christ in her, right? Her heart has become so conformed to Christ that she allows him to live in her and, that, and act through her and with her. Um, this great cooperation, and we have the opportunity to do this too as well in, um, in our, through our baptism. We have the Spirit of the Son living within us. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. We have God in us, and we are able to live through that and, and allow God to cultivate the divine life in our own hearts, in our own lives, and really let it transform our actions, let it transform our lives so that we can become even closer to God and, and act in such a way that we are able to make that make God's love manifest in the world. And so, so like Mary, we can, you know, we can imitate Mary and we can ask for intercession to cultivate these three levels. You know, first, 
a healthy, you know, physical heart, but also, you know, a good spiritual heart where we are able to, to seek after God and grow in intimacy with God. But most importantly, that, that, that very core, the very core of our heart must be Jesus. And, and we can imitate Mary in that. We can, we can follow in her footsteps and make Jesus the very center. So where do we go from here is, is the obvious question, right? This, this beautiful devotion to the Sacred Heart and to the Immaculate Heart of Mary What's next, right? How do, we, how do we get there? You know, it's great that they have great hearts, but, but what does that mean for me? Well, first we can, we can do something like pray a daily offering, right? That's something easy to take 30 seconds, maybe a minute if you go slow. Um, but, you know, every day you just pray a heart, offering your day to the Sacred Heart, letting it transform, steeping in that, meditating on that, on the beauty of the, of the theology, but also just the, the beauty of, of God's love for us. Um, another option would be to go to Eucharistic Adoration. The frequent Eucharistic Adoration will give us the opportunity to adore the heart of Christ in the Eucharist. And when we spend time with the heart of Christ in the Eucharist, it will transform your own heart. Uh, another option is to attend Mass. You know, this is where the body of Christ is made present to us. The heart of Christ is given to us. You can receive the heart of Christ every day. Uh, in, in that beautiful way and grow in intimacy there. Uh, another option, you, there's consecration prayers or dedication prayers. You can dedicate your life, your home, your marriage, your family, your church to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Uh, this, this opportunity to, to give everything over, right? We can do it with, to Jesus through Mary and with Mary, right? We hand our lives over. We take, we take our hands off this great act of faith. Um, also, hanging artwork or, or getting a statue of the heart of Mary is also a beautiful way to honor it uh, and grow in love and devotion to it. Um, and, and lastly, I'll just leave you with uh, the promises uh, to St. Margaret Mary Alcoke. Um, she, these are the promises that Jesus revealed to her um, that for those who consecrate themselves to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Um, it says, I will give them all the graces necessary for their state of life. I will establish peace in their homes. I will comfort them in all their afflictions. I will be their secure refuge during life and above all in death. I will bestow abundant blessings upon all their undertakings. Sinners will find my heart the source of in, an infinite ocean of mercy. Lukewarm souls shall become fervent. Fervent souls shall quickly mount to high perfection. I will bless every place in which an image of my heart is exposed and honored. I will give to priests the gift of touching the most hardened hearts. Those who shall promote this devotion shall have their names written in my heart. And I promise you in the excessive mercy of my heart that my all-powerful love will grant to all those who receive Holy Communion on the first Fridays in nine consecutive months the grace of final perseverance. They shall not die in my disgrace nor without receiving their sacraments. My divine heart shall be their safe refuge in this last month. This devotion is a powerful tool for us to, to seek after fervently intimacy with Christ. We are able to cultivate within us a, a Christocentric spirituality, a spirituality focused totally on Christ so that we can grow in faith, and grow in charity and grow in hope that when we die, we will be able to join him in heaven. It is a profession of faith to, to be devoted to the Sacred Heart because we have the incarnation, the paschal mystery, right? The, the death, the resurrection, and the assumption of Christ all bound into one in this deep personal relationship with Jesus. I encourage you all to, to seek further this, this devotion. This, this month of June is dedicated to the heart of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And I, and I encourage you all to, to find one of these opportunities, whether it be just a simple prayer every day or, or, a, or a, maybe a, a more complicated you know, set of ways to, to seek out adoration or do daily mass. And in these ways, we can really pursue together, find a group of people and pursue together you know, intimacy with Christ because that's what we were created for. That is what we were made for, is intimacy with God, Trinitarian God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that is what we have, that's what we hope for 
when we go to heaven. Let us conclude with the, with the novena prayer to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O most holy heart of Jesus, fountain of every blessing, I adore thee, I love thee, and with lively sorrow for my sins I offer thee this poor heart of mine. Make me humble, patient, pure, and holy obedient to th thy will. Grant, good Jesus, that I may live in thee, and for thee protect me in the midst of danger. Comfort me in my afflictions. Give me health of body, assistance in my temporal needs. Thy blessing on all that I do in the grace of a holy death. Amen. The sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Chaste heart of St. Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.